A lot of people think that CO2 or carbon dioxide is this waste product and we need to just get rid of it from our body. But what if I told you that carbon dioxide is just as important as oxygen in our body? So what does carbon dioxide exactly do? So CO2 helps control our blood pH or the acidity level of our blood. So if you have higher levels of CO2, your blood's gonna become more acidic. And if you have lower levels of CO2, your blood's gonna get more basic or alkaline. And you can actually do this yourself. Try holding your breath for 30 seconds. If you wanna pause the video, you can. After about 30 seconds, your body will get a lot more acidic because you're gonna be building up a lot more CO2. And you can also do the opposite. If you start hyperventilating and start breathing really fast, it's gonna dump out all of that CO2 in your body and now your body's gonna get a lot more basic. Now your body has to maintain a pH of about 7.35 to 7.45. That's a pretty small window. And if our pH gets too low or too high, the cells in our body will die. But luckily, you have this monitoring system in your brainstem. And this will detect the pH of your blood. And if it sees that it's getting too high or too low, it'll start to release these buffers. And these buffers will help control the blood pH. But in order for these buffers to be released, you need to have a good supply of CO2. If you don't have CO2, you don't get these buffers, and bad luck to you. But also, if you have no CO2, you get no oxygen. Now you might be wondering like, how the heck is that possible? I am breathing in oxygen from the air around me. So let's look at this diagram. So when you breathe in, you get oxygen from the air, and this oxygen is gonna work its way to your lungs. And then when it gets into your lungs, this oxygen will attach to a molecule called hemoglobin. So this hemoglobin is kind of like a train. It'll take this oxygen as its passenger, and it'll start to deliver this oxygen to all of our cells in our body. But the problem is, when we do not have enough carbon dioxide, this oxygen will not detach from this hemoglobin. So if you have low levels of carbon dioxide, this hemoglobin will try to deliver this oxygen to different cells, for example, like your brain. But when your carbon dioxide levels are too low, this oxygen is gonna stay attached to this hemoglobin, and your brain's not gonna get that oxygen. And this is why so many people are chronically tired. So now your body has to respond, right? Because it can't constantly live like this with too low levels of carbon dioxide because you're either gonna die or you're gonna just not be able to function. So we know we get oxygen from our air, but how do we get carbon dioxide? Well, we don't get it from our air. We actually only get it from two different things, from exercising, but also our body's metabolism. So our body's metabolism is just basically going on as we're existing. So that's why when we hold our breath, our carbon dioxide levels will pop up. But when these two methods of getting carbon dioxide are not enough, we get hypocapnia, or too low levels of carbon dioxide. Now what happens is our body will start to force us to retain carbon dioxide. So two symptoms of hypocapnia are bronchoconstriction and vasoconstriction. So you know how when you're watering plants, you see these really weak flowers, and you start to constrict that hose so you don't blast those flowers with water. Well, that's kind of what our body will do to our smooth muscles when we have too low carbon dioxide. So our body will actually contract our breathing tubes, and this will make it harder for us to breathe out. And this can cause like a tight chest and make it really hard for you to breathe in general, but the goal here is that your body's gonna retain more CO2. It's kind of like a defense mechanism that your body has to keep your CO2 levels in check. But it's not just your breathing tubes that are gonna get affected every single tube in your body will start to get affected when you have low levels of CO2. So now this will also cause constriction in your circulatory system, in your digestive system, in your urinary system, in your reproductive system, in your endocrine, your exocrine system. Your whole body is gonna start to get affected. Now you can start to see the effects of having low levels of CO2 and how it can start to affect the rest of your body. Now what if this is still not enough? What if your body contracting those smooth muscles and basically forcing you to retain more CO2 is still not enough to retain enough carbon dioxide for you to survive. Your body can also do a breath hold. Now this is kind of scary, but it's basically when your body will force you to stop breathing. So have you ever caught yourself during the day just holding your breath? This is what's called a breath hold, where your body's kind of building up those CO2 levels. But this can also happen when you're sleeping. And this is another cause of sleep apnea. So when people say that they need to get more oxygen or they need to go to some sort of oxygen bar to get more oxygen in their body, they really don't know what they're talking about. The real issue is 
they need to have more CO2 because really they need a way to retain that oxygen and make that oxygen go to the right places. So how do you make sure you maintain a good level of CO2 in your body? Well, it's gonna be breathing correctly. Now, the easiest way to change your breathing is to start changing it when you're resting. Don't try to change your breathing when you're working out or going for a swim or something like that. Most people are simply over breathing. They're breathing too much and they're using their mouth to breathe. You wanna focus on two things. You wanna focus on using your nose to breathe and using your diaphragm. So your nose has these hairs and these hairs will filter out different particles and dust. And it also has this mucus. This mucus has these enzymes that will basically kill a lot of viruses and bacteria. And your nose also has these turbinates. And these turbinates are what's gonna temper the air and make it more closer to your body temperature so it's easier on your lungs. And you also have these paranasal sinuses. And this is a big one because anytime air passes through these paranasal sinuses, it will release nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is very powerful. It's a very powerful antibacterial and also a vasodilator. So not only will this nitric oxide prevent you from getting sick, it's also gonna make you breathe more efficiently. Now you don't get any of these benefits when you breathe through your mouth. Instead, what you're doing is you're only doing this upper chest breathing, you're losing more CO2, and you're gonna have a lot of muscle spasms and be anxious and stressed out a lot. Now remember the second thing I said to focus on was using your diaphragm. So your diaphragm is this muscle that rests below your lungs, and when you use your diaphragm to breathe, this is gonna help ensure air gets spread across your entire lung surface area. Basically, your diaphragm will help distribute air better across your lungs, and this is gonna allow you to have more CO2 retention. So the way to engage your diaphragm is to start using your belly when you're breathing. If when you're breathing, you only see that your chest is moving and you see that your shoulders and your neck is moving, then that means that you're not breathing correctly. Instead, when you're breathing, you wanna make sure your posture doesn't change and you see your belly rising. When you see your belly kind of inflating with air, that means that your diaphragm is getting involved and that means that your entire lungs capacity is getting filled up with air. So if you do these two things using your nose and your diaphragm to breathe, you'll stop taking these quick shallow breaths and you'll start to take these longer, slower breaths. And that will help make sure you're having enough carbon dioxide in your body. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below. I will see you in the next video.